Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to another video. Uh, today, or in this video, we'll be doing um, a paper from May 2018. Uh, we continue doing test two preparations for software dev one. Okay, um, I managed to get the PDF and I'm just gonna go through it before we start. So this uh, test two, uh, will be from session A, okay? Remember the three sessions? So this is the one that was in session A. All right, so I'm gonna skip the instructions. Obviously, when you go through this paper, please go through the instructions and become familiar with them because, uh, yeah, you will be writing the test. Okay, encryption is the process of converting data to an unrecognizable form. It is commonly used to protect sensitive information so that only authorized parties can view it. One such encryption method is as follows. So a key is given in the form of an integer value and this key specifies how the plain text will be transformed. Transformation that occurs for each letter is as follows. If the key is negative, take each letter in the plain text and shift through the alphabet a given number of letters to the left. If the key is positive, take each letter in the plain text and shift through the alphabet the given number of letters to the right. So for characters that are not letters, keep them unchanged in the encrypted message. For example, given the key minus three and the plain text message, uh yeah they give us this message this problem is too easy for me i am an amazing programmer don't you agree uh to encrypt this plain text we take each letter and shift to three places in the alphabet to the left the first letter t becomes q the second letter h becomes e the third letter i becomes f and so on uh, by repeating the shift for each letter in the plain text we arrive at the following encrypted message. So that's the encrypted message. In the above example, we have the word easy. The letter A is shifted by minus three. To do this, we allow the alphabet to wrap around at each end. So a portion of the alphabet can be viewed as T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z, A, B, C, and so on. If we had to go three spaces to the left. This would convert A to X. We can see this as the word easy becomes BXPV. You are required to write a program that reads in from a file named input.txt, the key on the first line followed by the plain text on an unknown number of lines, encrypts the alphabetical characters of the plain text using the given key, leaves, all other non-alphabetic characters in the plain text unchanged and writes the encrypted message to a file named output.txt. Note that uppercase letters should remain uppercase in the encrypted text, lowercase letters should remain lowercase in the encrypted text, and text that appears on a new line in the input should also appear on a new line in the output. So see the examples below. All right, so we're given examples like we normally are for tests and we need to make sure that these two examples are satisfied using our code they also gave us um, some c type functions that we can use when coding and uh, the, uh, the description of each function is also given okay and that's it. Uh, you might be also given a uh, data sheet and that will have some definitions of some functions you can use, uh, built-in functions, also some tables that you can use. And uh, yeah, unfortunately it's not given in this one, but I'll, oh yeah it is, okay. So, 
uh, this is the uh, reference card I was talking about. So, uh, what we're going to make use of in this video is the SK chart. And what that does, it is a representation of each character um, in terms of numbers. So, remember, uh, characters include the alphabet, they include special uh, symbols, full stops, spaces, and all these uh, nice things that we can use. And uh, for this video, we're going to be working between the S key number of 97 and 122 over there. So let's start coding. Okay. Uh, cool. So let's first make sure our environment is set up correctly. So make sure you have the necessary libraries you're going to use uh, for now, the ones I do know that we need are these two libraries. Okay, we're using namespace std, okay. So, always check that you're actually uh, getting something printed out, you know, when you run, so that you know that your environment is in order, your IDE is in order. Okay, I'm getting hello. Cool. That works. So, Okay, yeah, so this is my input text file, right? And what I just want to write in here is the first line. I mean, not the first line, but the first example, right? Because I need to get data from my input text file. So I'm going to, no, I'm not going to copy because there might be some special characters in this even though they're not visible in the pdf that could go into my input text file so i'm gonna just type it out so we have minus three i'm not sure if you can see that because of the screen but the, the next line is this is too easy is it oh this problem is too easy for me so this problem is too easy for me. Full stop, I am an amazing programmer. I am an amazing programmer. Full stop. Don't you agree? So space, don't you agree? mark okay space the space after me and the full stop okay I included that make sure that you uh, copied everything correctly from the text file because you don't wanna get the wrong encryption just because you copied wrong that sucks big time okay so I have my minus three there and I have the sentence down here so I'm gonna quickly save that and then I want to see if I can successfully um, print it out in C++. So I want to see if I can actually access the input file and print out uh, the lines that are stored in there. So I'm going to use uh, an object called in file of type if stream that's going to allow me to access the file, right? So in file dot open and I named it input.txt as it is stated in the brief. So I'm going to make two variables. One will be the string where my sentence will come in, and another one will be an integer, and that would be where my key comes in. Okay, so initially 
I am going to immediately store something in key before I use the variable key, so I won't initialize it there. Same goes for sentence. I won't use sentence until, I mean, I, yeah, I'm not using sentence to perform any operation before I assign it to something, so it's okay not to initialize. Okay, cool. So I get that, and then uh, I know in the other videos what we normally do is like, wow, there's information coming in, for example, your in file, maybe into your sentence, and then you perform some operation, right? But in this case, we are getting two different uh, types of data types, you know, uh, different types of information. One is a key, which is an integer, and one is a string that's a sentence. So I can't really store, or I don't want to store both I mean, all the information in one variable because it becomes harder for me to separate, okay? So I do know that every time, like it is in the brief, every time they give us a key, it is always the first line in example one and two. So I know that the first thing I bring in would be my key. So what this does is that it takes the first uh first uh not set but the first information or data that's in the text file and passes it into the variable key so if i see out key i'm expecting to get minus three coming up let's see if that works okay so i am getting minus three Okay, now I want to get the sentence. Okay, so for example, one, uh, it's just one line, right? So I could do the same format again of writing in file uh, greater than, greater than, and put sentence. But I see that in example two, there's multiple lines, right? So what I want to do is put it in a while loop and if you watch my previous video we use get line and get line allows us to get the entire line and not just one uh, one piece of information that's separated by a space so what i'm going to get it from is in file and i'm going to put the information into sentence okay so this uh, will run once. I'm sorry, it will run twice. So it will start at the first line, even though key is there. So I need to make some type of check. Okay, let me just show you what I mean. So um, every time this while loop runs, I want to print out uh, the number one. Let's just print out one. I just want to show you something. Am I allowed to print out one? Yeah, I can. Okay. Uh, yeah, can you see this code runs twice even though there's only one line, right? So what it does, it actually reads from the top, from the minus three. And if I see out sentence, I want to show you something. And uh, I want to show you something. See, it leaves a gap, okay, and then it it leaves a gap. Oh, what happened there? Yeah, so it leaves a gap on the top. It doesn't set, store the minus three, and then prints out this. That is because the minus three is already saved in key, all right, and then it recognizes the first line is empty. So the first line is an empty string. So the condition I'm going to put on top is if uh, all right, let's look at the brief. I know there's something we can use. See, so we can use uh, what is it? Is empty. Alright, it's not on the brief, but something what is it 
So if is it just empty? Uh, sentence dot empty. Yes. So if the string dot empty, so that that checks if it's empty, right? It's a boolean. If this is false, okay, then I want it to perform my piece of code here. And so if it's so if the sentence is not empty, perform this code, right? That's what that if statement means. So I'm just gonna run this again. Yeah, see, so there's no more space on the top. It recognizes that, okay, first piece, the minus three goes into key, and then that leaves the first line blank in a sense. And then um, uh, it then will only perform this piece of code when it recognizes that the string or the sentence is not empty. Okay, now, Let's continue once that is clarified. So what we want to do, uh, let me just draw it for you. Cool. So where is my pen? So, all right, I'm just going to wait for my pencil to connect so long. I don't know why it's doing that. All right. So I'll just talk to you and say, so what we're planning to do is get in the sentence, take in the key, and then shift every letter accordingly. So in the beginning, I said we're going to be using the ASCII table. Right, that means every alphabet we need to shift still not connecting. Every alphabet we need to shift has a number attached to it, so we can actually use maths to solve this problem, and that's what. I'm gonna do so. Really? Yeah. All right. Let's use that method to solve this problem. Okay. So here we go. So as a sentence comes in that is not empty, we want to encrypt it. Okay. And this is a function that I put here. I haven't made it yet, but I'm just planning. So it will take in the key and it will take in the sentence and then do the shifting for me. Okay. So above int main, I'm going to make it void for now. I'll change that later if I need to return something. I'm going to encrypt. And the first thing, it takes an integer, which is my key, and then takes in a string for the sentence that it needs to change. Sentence. Cool. Right. Uh, yeah, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Cool. Okay, so once again, I'm changing each and every individual letter in the sentence, as you can see here below. And I therefore need to use some type of loop or function that allow me to access each 
character in the string. Okay, so I'm going to use a for loop to run through the entire sentence and it will start indexing from the first character t which is indexed zero and it will go up to the length just before the length of the sentence uh, and increments by one cool so so for every character that you pass through this is what this for loop means okay i first want to check what if it actually is an alphabet that's there right so if and i'm going to use one of the functions i mean one of the functions yeah given which was is alpha right so is alpha does what it returns true if character is a letter so i'm going to use that so if is alpha right so what are we checking we're going to check the sentence at i because that is an individual character in the sentence and if this is true that means we are dealing with a character right so once we figure out that uh so what do we need to do to the characters uh I need to change them okay so if we find it's a character then right i said i'm going to use maths to sort this out right so i'm going to make a character variable and call it a letter and i'm going to make an integer uh, variable uh, a data type or variable and call it ASCII number. Okay, so number will stand for number. So what I'm planning to do is that for each letter that I have in the sentence, there is an alphabet. I want to get the corresponding ASCII number and then take that number and I'll take that number and uh, shift it by the key which is also of type int right so i can perform some mathematical uh, operation there between key and ascii number so that's what i'm planning to do so you might ask yourself okay so how do you actually change a character into a an integer so there is a trick to do that and i'll show it to you now so if is alpha if we do find that it is an alphabet, we want to store it in letter. So letter will equals to sentence at i. And then we want to change it from an alphabet into an ASCII number. And that will be letter minus zero don't ask me why this works just know that it works so what's going to happen is that letter will have in the first case okay let's go through this it'll have t right and then t gets passed to ascii number through this operation but it's no more an alphabet what is it now it's actually an ascii number Okay, so uh, 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 uh. so every time we write code, we want to check if it works. Okay, so I just want to show you guys that this actually works. But before I do that, uh, the T is a capital. Okay, and according to the brief, for a capital T, we need to return a capital Q. Okay. But I want to deal with ASCII numbers between 97, which is A, 
and 122, which is Z. And these are all small letters. So there's se a separate section for capital letters, right? So I need a way to try and change it to lowercase and then at a later stage change it to uppercase again because I'm going to need to do that. So I'm going to make another variable. I'm going to make it a Boolean, right? And call it capital letter. Remember, Booleans will... So, capital letter. So remember, Booleans will only have true and false, right? So after, oh, okay. Uh, so in this if statement, right, I'm going to say if uh, there's something we can use to detect if something is capital, right? So is upper true if character is an uppercase letter? So I'm going to use is upper, right? Is upper. And what am I going to test? I'm going to test sentence at I. So if upper, if is upper is true, then I'm going to use capital letter, right? And set it to true. So capital letter now will be true, right? And else, so if it's not a capital letter, make capital letter equals to false. Cool. So, Cool. So what's going to happen is that T comes in, it is an alphabet, then is T a capital letter? Yes, it is. So, okay, set capital letter to be true. So this else statement doesn't get um, executed for T, capital T, right? Then before I get or I assign, letter, assign T to letter, I want to do what? I want to change every single um, uh, oh yeah so I want to change I can do it here so I want letter to only be I want only small letters right so I'm going to use this to lower so what to lower does it returns lowercase version of character if there is one otherwise it returns the character unchanged so i'm going to say i'm going to type well, i'm going to use to lower so every alphabet that comes into letter is lowercase so that makes my math easier it makes my coding easier i just have a flag of some sort that will tell me if the letter was capital and then at a later stage I'll have a new statement that just says if it if capital letter is true then change it back to upper okay because there is to upper which allows me to change something from small letter to big letter okay uh, so after I change it to lower I then get the ASCII number for in this first case, small t. And I just want to show you that this code actually works. So what I'm going to do is see out letter at this stage, OK? And then end line. And as I told you in the previous video, is that you need to test every single section or part of your code so that uh, you know where it makes your debugging easy you know where you're actually going wrong okay so i'm going to comment out this while statement and the reason for doing that is that i just want to put t in to test if the code is working and actually get the ascii value for t because this for loop will run what the entire length of uh 
the sentence and for every time that this loop runs this for loop can you see where it ends over the earth it will see out each and every ascii value for each and every letter that i have and i don't want that for now i just want to test if it works for one if it works for one it works for the other ones okay Proof by induction. Ha, kidding. Okay, so it's gonna take in the key at first, and then I'm going to set sentence to equals to just K. I mean, sorry, capital T, right? Capital T. And then after it does that, it's like, if sentence is empty, it's not empty. So it will perform this, it will store the key and store the sentence. Okay, so let me run this code. Hopefully, okay, so it printed out T. And can you see it's small case? So it did change it from big case to small case. And another thing I want to test if I actually get the ASCII value. So the ASCII number 40 in this case. So let's run that again. Okay, 116, right? So let's go back to our reference card and look for t so can you see here it is t is 116 okay so it actually works okay so now that we know that piece of code works i'm going to remove this and i'm going to uncomment my while loop my while loop works right we tested that so, so far we have no errors of codes working until this point. So I'm going to remove the C out for now. And let's continue. So, so far we have successfully checked if uh, we have successfully separated alphabets from any other character type. We have successfully uh, made a flag to show if a letter is capital or small and we have uh, successfully changed every character in the sentence from high case to low case okay and then we have successfully changed or managed to get the ascii number of each and every character or letter in our sentence okay so after we get the ascii value what do you want to do? You want to now um, do the shifting, right? So how the shifting will work is that, let's say you're at T, so you have 116. Then you're like, your key is shift minus three, right? So it's going to go S, R, and then Q. So T will become Q. Let's just confirm that. Uh, Come on, zoom out, zoom out. Yeah, not that much. Yes, so T becomes Q, okay? So let's do that. So what we want to do next is uh, we're going to say um ski so this new ski num ski number will equals to the previous ski number that we have which at this point is 116 and we're going to add the key so even though we're shifting three characters to the left which is before which is a minus uh putting a plus sign there uh will still allow that to happen and not a minus sign even though we are subtracting and that's because uh in maths we know that if you say one plus minus three if you add a negative integer it will still do the subtraction for you so you still get minus two 
and that will just help you uh, shift right so now we what are we expecting this ASCII number to be we're expecting it at this point to be 116 right plus the negative 3 okay which gives us what 113 okay that's just for T so we want to see that we that 113 uh, actually happens okay so I'm not gonna test it now I'm gonna write more code and then test it later so ASCII number is equals to previous ASCII number plus T and then uh, you want to construct a new sentence, right? So you need to put this uh, new alphabet that you got somewhere. So what we're going to do is create another variable, string variable, and I'm going to call it E sentence, sentence. And why E sentence? The E will stand for encryption, right? And what I'm going to do, because I'm going to use it in a specific way, I'll show you that now is that I want to initialize it right and the way you initialize a string is to clear a string so I'm going to use string dot clear so now I know that e sentence is clear okay um, if you have multiple uh, lines where encrypt will be used and you don't no no, no. so we'll just ignore what I said okay so just got to be careful with these brackets, curly braces, these braces. Um, so our for loop gets a character. It does the check. And then it needs to take. So I'm not going to construct the new sentence here because Remember, this uh, construction will only happen when this if statement executes, right? But I don't want to only print uh, alphabets in my in my final encrypted sentence. I want to pr uh, print as well the punctuation marks and the spaces. So I'm going to do it outside this if statement, but still within this uh, for loop because it passes through every character, whether it's an alphabet or whatever. So still inside the for loop, but outside the if statement, I say e sentence is going to equals to e sentence. And I'm going to add, oh no, I can't do that yet. Mistake. I need to convert this ASCII number, this new ASCII number back into uh, a character, right? So it's, it's, more simpler so all I have to do is say letter is going to equals to ASCII number don't ask me why it works it works no errors there okay so I can then say e sentence will equals to e sentence plus letter remember letter is no longer T like it is at this point it now becomes what the character value of 113, which at this stage is a small Q. And we don't want a small Q, so I need to fix that as well. So after this if statement, I'm going to make another if statement here. So if capital letter equals true, then Add to the, the to upper version of the letter, right? Does it work? Invalid. Okay, so since it's giving me errors, I'm gonna say letter is gonna equals to to upper version of letter, and then just add letter. Does that work? 
capital letter uh, yeah, spell it wrong capital letter uninitialized when used here oh okay so i'm going to put this if statement inside here and that's because it's saying that i might not have initialized capital letter or used it uh, before i actually initialized it at this point right so so i'm just gonna change it to upper and then outside the if statement i'm going to uh, undo e sentence and equals to e sentence plus letter okay so now it's complaining about letter where does this for loop end? Ah, come on. Don't fail me now. Okay, yeah, no. Uh, That will equals that. Yeah, that's okay. So it's saying that it might be uninitialized at this point. Okay, so hmm. For if is alpha is true to this, if it's a capital letter, to change it back, right? Um, okay, else. Okay, so else just take E sentence and add uh, sentence dot add I. Okay, so I have this if statement for alphabets. And if it's not, then it needs to perform this else statement, just needs to add what it gets, right? So if I do find that it is an uh, it is an alphabet, I need to perform this operation and then add the letter there. Hopefully now there's no errors. Cool. So let's uh, test if this piece of code actually works. And then uh, I'm actually going to run. I'm going to run it with, so outside this for loop after it's done. There. So I'm going to see out E sentence and end the line. So it should at this point transform every single character into an ASCII number and then shift it and then convert back. Okay, so this is what I'm getting, right? Q, E, F, P, blah, 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 blah. Q, E, F, P. Okay. 
if p is getting printed again, that's a problem. And then M O L underscore. Uh, so I'm not getting what is here. Not by, I'm not even close. Okay. Okay. There is something that's working, but not everything is working, right? I don't know why FP, I'm just going to check. Yeah. See, I made a mistake here. So it's this problem. So not this is, so let's save that. Uh, let's run this again. Okay. So I just want to compare or show you all something. Copy, paste. Right. So for THIS, which is this, I am getting the correct alphabets. For the next word, I'm getting some of them, right? But not all of the alphabets. And the next word works. So some words do work and some don't. Okay, so a good way of also debugging is to check what characters are not actually working. So, for example, let's mark it so that Y, so the second, in the second word, the first, second, third, the fourth character is not working. So the fourth character is one, two, three, four. It's a B, okay? And we know that, okay, when we shift B, three times to the left, it passes A and then somehow, what is it doing? It's actually taking characters uh, outside the range that we set, because we didn't set any range yet. So our code takes B right now, and instead of going from B to Y, which would be minus three, right? It goes from B and goes up this way. So it's like one, two, three. And that's actually that underscore there. So in order for us to wrap around, okay, the thing we're not doing is wrapping around at this point. So for us to uh, where is it? Mm, yeah, so it's like in the above example, we have the word easy. Okay, the letter A is shifted minus by minus three. To do this, we allow the alphabet to wrap around at each end so portions of the alphabet can be viewed as blah, 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 blah. So, what we need to be doing is that if we're going to go backwards, right? So, if we have, uh, let's say, x y z a b c so if we're going to go backwards if we had b we need to somehow go back to the values here so we need to try and make a function that's going to wrap around okay and you might ask yourself so how are we going to do that excuse me so in this if statement right here right so after we get the ascii number we need to make uh, some condition that we check. Okay, so if the ASCII number is what? Uh, you know that uh, A is 96, uh, B is uh, 97, and so on and so on. Okay, so if we are at, uh, so if the ASCII number minus the key is less than 96 then we have a problem we need to wrap around and how do we wrap around we need to go to z and start at z and you know z is 122 okay so you can go to your reference card and just check if uh, those are correct so after we get the ascii number which was at this point okay what do we do we need to put an if statement 
And in that if statement, what are we going to say? We're going to say if the ASCII number plus the key is what is less than 96. We need to do something, right? Or if the ASCII uh, number plus the key, in the case of a positive key, what would be the case? So let's say you are at Z, which is 122, and the key is a positive one. That's going to take you to 123. But on this thing, the, the reference card, the ASCII chart, we see that there actually is a character for 123, but it's this bracy, left bracy. We don't want that. We want it to jump back to A. So, or if the S key plus the key is greater than 122, then we need to perform some sort of operation. So just to make this clear, I'm going to use brackets between these two if conditions, right? So that makes it more clear for me to read. Uh, and then there's some code I need to write. So it is a bit of code because we need to say, okay, do this to the ASCII number, do this to the key. So I'm going to branch in, I'm going to branch out into another function, okay? And I'm going to call this function wrap around. I haven't made it yet, but I just want to see what I'm actually going to do with it. So in wrap around, I'm going to take in the key and the ASCII uh, number. Yes. So the key and the ASCII number, that's what I need. So because I used wraparound in this function, in this function, I need to make it above encrypt. If I make it below and uh, code blocks or whatever ID you're using, read encrypt because it reads from the top down. It's going to be like, hold on. I have this function called wraparound, but there's no definition for it above. So I don't know what it is. So how do I reserve memory for it? How do I know how to execute this piece of code? So I need to make the function. For now, I'll call it void. I'll make it of, uh, return nothing, okay. So wrap around. And it's gonna take in two integers. One will be the key and one will be the ASCII number. Oh, it's also an integer. Okay, there. So, all right, so I'm not going to do this. Let me just change that again. So I'm just going to take in the ASCII number, okay? I'm just going to take in the ASCII number. Um, but what I'm going to do is say that the so in this if statement, if I find that the ASCII number is less than 96 or greater than 122, I'm going to do all my maths in here instead of there. So I'm going to say that the new ASCII number is going to equal to the previous ASCII number plus the key. Okay. So now this new ASCII number could be anything. It could be not in this range, right? It won't be between 96 and uh, 96 would be including, so that bracket, 96 and 122. So it will, it might, it will not be in this range, okay? Uh, so that is not in there. So, as soon as that number comes in here, what I have to say is that, okay, I need to identify how many shifts it went past, okay? So what I'm going to do is say ASCII number. Uh, let me think of this. Oh, okay. So I'm going to have if two if statements. So if ASCII number is less than 96. I need to do that 
else if sorry else if ASCII number is greater than 122 then I'll perform something there so if the ASCII number is less than 96 what do we need to do what's the problem okay there. so if the ASCII number is less than 96 what do we need to do so we'll take remember we're going from a a is equals to 96 sorry a is equals to 96 on the ASCII table and we are jumping to z which is 122 so i need to convert the ASCII number ASCII number will now equals to what uh, 122 minus ASCII number. Oh no, this will tell me how many I shifted. All right, so I'm going to make a temporary variable here. Temp. Okay. And I'm going to say this temporary variable will store the difference. Okay. So temp will equals to uh, 96 um, 96 plus uh, I need the difference minus okay 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 so I'm going to store the shift in temp and I want uh, temp in this case to be shifting left. So what I'm going to do is take as the ASCII number, I'm going to minus 96 that because it's a value less than 96, it's going to be negative and uh, I'm going to take ASCII. Oh, yes, I'm going to make ASCII number equals to 122, which is Z, and I'm going to add the difference which I stored in temp. I hope that works. I wish I could illustrate it for you, but my pen is just not working. I keep trying to connect it. It's giving me trouble. Uh, maybe it's static. Let's try it again. No. Okay, so for temp at Z, right? So if it's greater than 122, and I want temp to be uh, positive, right? Because I'm shifting, so I'm shifting to the right because it's positive. So I want it to be a positive number. So I'm going to say S key minus 122. That'll give me a positive number. And then S key, number will equals to one oh sorry it'll equal to remember we go to a and we add temp so what i've done here is get the shift okay between where ASCII number currently is and as we said that ASCII number will not be in the range between 96 and 122 ways where this and this range is where we want to deal it's not going to be in there it's going to be outside so temp gets the shift so it actually temp is like the key okay and then ASCII the new ASCII number that I'm assigning will be Z plus the shift okay and because 
the shift will be the key will be negative or the shift will be negative at this point it's actually z minus the shift and this shift it does shifts it to the left and then if we have a positive shift and we are at z the shift okay so let's say this number is 150 for example so we minus 122 we get a positive number so the new ascii number would be remember after z we need to get a again and then we add the shift so we can it's like in a sense we're continuing the shift but we need to start it at a again so yeah if we are out of the bounds at the lower end at a we go to z and continue the shift and if we are at the above the upper bound which is past z we what we go to a and we continue shifting to the right okay so i need to check if this piece of code works and the ascii number is actually changing okay in this case so i'm going to pass it by reference so don't get confused with this thing all it does is saying that go to the address of where this variable is stored and in that place store whatever change is happening here remember after you close the brackets of a function whatever uh, operation you performed to these variables uh, gets like it gets destroyed and if you are just passing it in this if you're passing the variable ascii num in this sense you, you're passing a copy of it so you're passing just the number so if it's 12 it passes 12 in here and uses this as 12 and then once this closes uh that data is lost but if i actually save it at the address of this variable then whatever change i've done here happens at this address so i know that once i do this all right in this if statement where we are out of bounds it brings it back into bounds okay and at this point we know that uh the ascii number gets shifted so i don't need to perform this shift you know what i'm talking about this shift here because i do this shift over here so uh i'm going to put this in an else statement so if the ascii number after shifting is out of bounds wrap around okay and if it's not out of bounds so let's say we're going from z and we are shifting to the left one spot if we are at z we'll go to y and that's in bounds there's no need to wrap around so else if we are in bounds then perform this perform this so what are we going to do here we're just shifting like normal no wrapping around right so this part is for what if it's out of bounds do this else if it's not out of bounds just shift like normal <laughs> excuse me after you've shifted save that answer in ascii uh in letter sorry okay so at this point this is our conversion from ascii number to alphabets again right and if you're coding you maybe probably write to comment uh uh converting i write my comments at the end so converting as the number back into character form uh, then we have our check for capital letters right 
and each of them have the adding of sentence, right? So then we're printing out the final sentence outside this entire for loop. So what I'm going to do is run this code and hopefully the characters that did not shift properly will shift correctly. Okay. Can you see I'm only seeing alphabets now and uh, punctuation marks. I'm almost seeing those underscores and brackets and stuff. So let me check if it actually matches with this. Remember, this is the output. Okay, so if you can check it, it does match, all right? Uh, when you're in the test, just check every alphabet, don't assume that just because you see the first word or something that's working. J, B, full stop, F, X, X, J, X, F, K, D. M O L D O X J J P O full stop. Yes, okay. Uh, what I want to check is the spacing. So I noticed that spacing is okay. So the full stop is next to J P and then there's a space. And then the full stop is next to BO, and then there's a space. And then the, the question mark is right next to the BB. All right, so right next to the BB, next to the BO, next to the JB, capital Q, capital F, capital Q, capital F. Cool. So we got it working for the first example. So I'm going to try the next example. And to do that, I need to change my input.txt, right? So 16, and then expecting the world to treat you. So expecting the world to treat you. Fairly because you are a good person. Fairly because you are a good person is a little like expecting the bull not to is like expecting the bull not to oh make sure that, that is like expecting the bull not to is a little like <laughs> is a little like yeah, attack you because you're a vegetarian. So I wonder where they get these things from. Uh, attack you. Oh, and it's more. Oh, because you are vegetarian. Hey. Attack you because you are vegetarian. Attack you because you are vegetarian. Full stop. Uh, is a little like expecting the bull not to. Is a little like expecting the bull not to. Fairly because you are a good person. Fairly because you are a good person. Expecting the world to treat you. Expecting the world to treat you. And why I do that is I want to make sure that my input uh, file is correct because when I'm typing in under test conditions, I don't want that stress, you know. I don't want to be getting things wrong just because I didn't type correctly. Okay, so I'm going to run this. 
and that's the beauty of functions. I don't need to change anything because it's, it, it deals with every line. Everything that comes at it. Yeah, ne? Okay. Uh, where's the solution? Let's copy and paste this. See if we get it correct. Copy. And this is why I don't like copying and pasting. You'll see now. Numbers come in and spacing is wrong. And see, like it left space between the full stops and stuff. Okay. Uh, right, so an FUS, an FUS, J Y D W, correct, J X U, J X U, Mert, Mert, J J, Chuku, Chuku, Uk, Uk, yeah, whatever that word is. So, uh, this is, you can see some Afrikaans here, Uk and Viet, Uk, Uk, Uk. Ek, ook, ek, ook. Yeah. Um, so it works. It's correct. And at that point, like after you've checked that your two examples work, your code is fine. You will get most of your marks. Not all of them. If you want all your marks, you need to comment. Okay, so let's do the comments quickly. Let's start at main, because main summarizes all our functions for us. Uh, I'm just going to take out all the explanations I wrote, okay? Okay, so main. Uh, let's leave a space there. Uh, oh, no, you won't get majority of your marks. There's still some stuff I need to do here. Let's let's do that quickly. So I can't see out, right? We don't want any console output. We want to record it in uh, the output.txt file, right? So I'm going to make our encrypt function return a string. And the string it's going to return is e sentence. And I will say sentence will now equals to the encrypted version, okay? So because I'm returning a string over there, that string will get passed to this string in main, and this uh, sentence variable will now hold the encrypted, um, the encrypted uh, text. And what I want to do is take it to my out file, okay? So I'm going to show you how to do that quick, quick. So OF stream, I make a variable called uh, out file of type of stream and out file dot open. And I want it to open output.txt. So if output.txt does not exist on your computer, it will make one at this point. Okay. If it does exist, it will find it and open it, or it will overwrite. It will overwrite it actually. Uh, and what do I want to do? So at this point, why do I want to do it here? Because this while loop gets lines, so it only gets. So the way the code works, it gets this first line, does the encryption, and then that's like one one round, right? The second time, it takes in this, but in English without encryption, right? So it takes that in. So it discarded this and the solution. So after it encrypts one line in my text file, I want to take it to my out file. So out file would just take sentence and at the end, skip the line or end the line and go to the next line. So what it will do now is print that out at this point. And then at the beginning of the while loop takes in a new sentence, performs the encryption, and then 
to the out file it takes that so that will continue going until it's done so that is fine uh, good coding practice is that at the end you need to close your file streams right your file streams okay after you close then you're done so let me just run this code. I should got no console output there. Cool. So it just, yeah, so just return zero. And I'm just gonna go to my desktop and show you my out file, my output.txt file, right? Can you see it has all the, the text, the encrypted text right there, the way it is in the example, so that works. Okay, and then let's just put comments, starting with main. So main will have um, this, this, uh, what is the, when I, remember the last time when I, a uh, previous video I told you, comments should be, why uh, comment about why you did something and not how so they want the logic and not the language they want you to so this is to store um, to store uh, text uh, um, to store shifting key uh, and then here I'm going to say opening text files okay and then here I'm going to write uh, get each line in text file if text file if it contains information good and then at this point um and corruption function uh, encrypts, sorry, encrypts text, encrypts text and stores results in sentence. And then uh, stores or oh, writes writes output uh, writes encrypted message in output output dot txt and you can put that in quotation marks because it's a, it's a file name right and then close text files uh, yeah yeah okay so wrap around what does this do wrap around um, ensures s key number remains in the lower case alphabetic range lower case meaning small characters alphabetic meaning all the alphabets and range meaning between a and z that's all uh, and then uh, stores shift remember temp stores the shift stores shift 
if we go below s key value of a and a is the actual uh, alphabet so I'm going to put it in quotation marks and then this um, begins at z and continues contin continues shift process and then this one stores shift if not we sorry we're not going below if it goes if it goes below uh, not below goes above s key value of z and then begins at a and continues shift process uh, so what does encrypt do converts alpha bits into encrypted characters by using shift key uh, executes for alpha bits only um, so this one is to uh, create flag for capital letters and shows a range between A and Z is kept converting ASCII number back into character form. Okay, that's important. And this one is converting uh, la, 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 alphabet into uh, use character, converting character uh, to, into ASCII number. Cool. Uh, yeah, constructing. Yeah, you can put constructing constructs encrypted text. Do, 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 do. Yeah, so comment about why you did something and not how. Very important. And uh, you can watch Bucky's videos. I, in case that this input doesn't work, right? You can have an if statement. It's like if in file uh, dot is c dot is open is false so that means it did not open the file correctly right you could say uh, return one or return error message or something so return uh, error or return I don't know return one so see out uh, failed 
to open input file. You actually get marks for putting this in. This is just to show that, you know, you have some sort of, uh, uh, not data protection, but uh, error, error checking, error checking, error check, you get marks for error checking. Just go around this thing. Yeah, so that this uh, you can use this piece of code for error checking, and then I'll, I'll write here uh, text file error checking. Okay, remember input needs to exist for you to run this code, so put that in. You get marks for it. Uh, and yeah, I can write this cards empty lines. Because in the examples we had, there's no empty line, right? So I just want to discard it because the way I wrote the code, it will have an empty empty line because I'm saving key. I'm saving the first line in here. So when this get line initialize this while loop uh, initiates, it it starts from the top, gets the first line again. Okay, guys, thank you for watching the video. I hope you understood uh, the code and in the next video I'll try to get my pencil working so I can actually illustrate what we're doing with the code. I don't like the fact that I had to struggle to show you old stuff, you know, or I have to explain in a, a non non-picture form you know it's it's easier for us humans to understand pictures and numbers and alphabets and stuff so thank you for watching hope this helps if you need further clarification uh please comment in the video down below or whatsapp me uh get my number somehow and yeah see you in the next video thanks for watching